Thank you, Mr. Town Manager. Um, welcome to tonight's uh, Town Council meeting. Today is April 5th. This is a workshop council meeting. Uh, by executive order, it is uh, a virtual, as you can see on your screen as well. Uh, it is being recorded for future broadcast. Uh, would we have uh, Councilman, let's see, who hasn't done it in a while? Councilman Pentelo, would you like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And I saw Sue on as well. Sue, if you would, please take the attendance. Sure. Councillor Biggs? Present. Councillor Flanagan? Here. Councillor Forrest? Here. Councillor Hill? Here. Councillor O'Connor? No, he's on Councilor mute. Here. Councillor Pelletier? Here. Councillor Pentelo? Here. Deputy Mayor Mazzarella? Here. And Mayor Rell? I am here. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Um, before we get any further, I believe we have a proclamation. Uh, I don't know, Gary, if you have it to be able to screen share for us. Uh, I wanna you know, show my appreciation to Councilman Forrest for this and bringing it to our attention uh, about a week to 10 days ago. Uh, I believe we have a, a proclamation that uh, he would like to read into the record. And I don't know if you're ready, Matt, if you are. Perfect, and I think Gary will bring it up on the screen as well. well May <clears throat> mayor, I mean, you, you are the mayor. It really, it probably is more, uh, it, is, it is more apropos that you, as the leader of the council, sort of read it in and, and uh, uh, min min ministeriously do it. But I, I appreciate the efforts. And just to give a little background of the council, Mike uh, and I have been working on this proclamation for about the last week. It started, of course, with the events going on in the country. Uh, some general concerns that were brought to my attention from some members of our of our human rights group, just as it should. Um, ser uh, several emails were forwarded to me about some language uh, relating to just uh, condemning the, the the basically blatant racism that is sort of picking up over the last two weeks. And I, I just you know I'm I'm not I'm no savant here in words, but I just always remember uh, back to uh, Mrs. Greenblatt's class and, uh, and learning about World War II and, and sort of that very popular concept of, you know, they came for one section of society and no one spoke up and they came for another section of society and no one spoke up and they came for a third section of society. And by the time they came for me, for me there was no one to speak up. So mm -hmm. I feel like this is sort of that, that moment in time where at this time, you know, anti-Asian sort of violence and and discrimination is is peaking and it's time for us to speak up as a as a community and so that's where we work together and i thank you for the time and uh, and putting this together i think it's something we can all get behind it wasn't very difficult in some respects to coalesce and to saying you know we come from a lot of different places but let's all get along so with that i turn it over to you mayor realm thank you for your work sure thank you and uh, on behalf of not only the efforts of Matt, myself, and uh, the entire council. Uh, I will read this. It's a proclamation condemning anti-Asian hate. Whereas <clears throat> more than 4% of Weathersfield's population is of Asian descent, and whereas the Asian American and Pacific Islander population makes up significant contributions to the cultural, educational, and economic fabric of our community, and whereas incidents of anti-AAPI violence and harassment in the United States have increased since the beginning of the pandemic, including efforts to scapegoat the AAPI community for the COVID-19 virus. And whereas no race, nationality, or ethnicity is responsible for COVID-19 and having Asian ancestry or any other ancestry does not make a person more vulnerable to COVID-19. And whereas July 20th, 20, or July 2020, 
Pew Research Center study found that one third of members of the AAPI community reported being the target of racial slurs or scapegoating since the pandemic began. And whereas the September 8, 2020, excuse me, whereas on September 8, 2020, the Town of Wethersfield Council, Town of Wethersfield Council adopted an ordinance to stand against racism, inequality, and discrimination. And whereas a recent report revealed that there have been at least 3,795 hate incidents targeting the AAPI community from March 19, 2020 to this February 28, 2021. And whereas in communities around our nation, there have been horrific incidents against members of the AAPI community, including assaults, slashings, and unfortunately deaths. And whereas on January 26, 2021, President issued a presidential memorandum condemning and combating racism, xenophobia, and intolerance against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in the United States. And whereas on March 16, 2021, eight people were killed in shootings in Atlanta, six of whom were Asian women. And whereas language that ev evokes xenophobia endangers our communities, who are experiencing highlighted discrimination. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town of Wethersfield affirms its commitment to equality, equity, equality, being a justice-oriented town, and ask that all residents join together in condemning any hate directed at Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in our community. And be it further resolved that the Town of Wethersfield further affirms its commitment to actively combating racism, achieving racial and social equity, and protecting Wethersfield's most vulnerable residents. In witness whereof, I here undo set my hand and cause the seal of the Town of Wethersfield, Connecticut, to be affixed this fifth day of April, 2021. Thank you for the opportunity to do that. And thank you, Matt, for um, sharing this with me early on and being able to uh, put this forward to uh, the residents tonight. Thank you very much, Mike. It was uh, an honor to work with you on this. I know it <clears throat> doesn't necessarily change anything, you know, in the here and now, but I think it's important to speak up for, for what we're doing. And also want to also thank <laughs> Maria Alfonso uh, worked with me on this as well. So she should get some thanks and sent us uh, a lot of sort of versions of what this might look like since it's not something that you write every day. So thanks a lot, Mayor. Let's hope we don't have to write it every day. Let's but thank you, thank you, Maria, and thank you to the uh, Human Rights and Relations Committee for this. Okay, uh, moving on to the agenda at hand. I believe we have some callers. If uh, I would uh, ask upon Gary, do we have folks on the line tonight? Uh, first caller, 860883. 4824. If you wish to speak, please press star six, state your name and address for the record. You'll have five minutes to speak. Um, actually, I just want to be a participant just listening in to the council meeting tonight. Thank you for the opportunity. Sure. Thank you. Next caller, 860-690. Four five seven six. Good evening. Good evening. It's Kevin Sullivan from 79 Wright Road. I'm also a member of Bike Walk Weathersfield. I'm calling to express support that the town council uh, endorsed nominating our Heritage Way as an official state greenway. Uh, to me, the main benefits of our green, our heritage way, and uh, submitting a nomination to DEEP is to raise awareness to our citizens that we have such a great thing in the heritage way, and raise awareness among potential visitors, and also increase the likelihood of grant awards. I've spoken with DEEP uh, about the heritage way as a being designated as a greenway. And their main interest in designating greenways is, <clears throat> excuse me, is connectivity. And by that, uh, what, what does the greenway connect to? Uh, it couldn't just be a, uh, a, a hundred 
hundred foot stretch of uh, of path uh, and be of significance to be nominated as an official state greenway. Uh, you probably know the Heritage Way goes across our town and, incu- and includes many of our great assets from the 1860 reservoir to uh, schoolyards and uh, Millwoods Park and Wintergreen Woods, the Folly Book Trail, uh, the Cove, uh, Old Weathersfield. It's really a, a wonderful a wonderful thing that we already have in our town. And, and I think it's, it's uh, due time that we nominate it as a greenway. The other special thing that's happening is that Rocky Hill is also submitting a nomination for its greenway in the Great Meadows, which connects directly with the end of Heritage Way in the Great Meadows. So connectivity is, is everything about these two nominations going forward at the same time. It's, it's a really very special thing. So I hope the town council considers this carefully and supports nominating our Heritage Way as an official state greenway. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you for calling in and letting us know about that. Uh, it is coming up on our agenda shortly. Gary. Yep, sorry. Go. Fighting with the clock. Yep. Can't, there's no beating the clock. No, no racing against time. Just a, uh, it's, it's a challenge here. Okay. Will not stop. There we go. Next caller is 860. 860-563-6923. Uh, good evening. This is Robert Young from uh, 20 Copper Mill Road. Um, you know, guys, uh, I, I've been uh, talking to you about the Keisha farm and how we need to turn that into an asset. Uh, don't hear anything about anything from you fellas, uh, from you folks regarding uh, turning it into something that's going to create some revenue. Um, and, and it's kind of disappointing, you know? The town of Weathersfield itself for years and years has been complaining that they don't have enough land to change into something that would generate taxes. Um, and here you have a great opportunity, and you're all silent. It's, it's, it's something to really consider the money that you could bring in for the town by turning the Keisha farm into a 55 plus community. I'm sure there's a lot, we've seen these communities all over our area in other towns. They've been successful. The uh, people buy them, people hold on to them. Sometimes some leave, but the fact is they're nice looking places. They're nice-looking communities. They're they're trouble-free. In most cases, or probably in all cases, they're no expense to the town except for maybe the garbage, if they even allow that, because normally condo fees or community fees take care of all of that. And and this is a great opportunity. I hope you don't miss it. You know, you could you could make a heck of a nice chunk take a chunk out of our taxes by turning that into a um, 55 plus community. Now, on the other hand, I listened to the town manager, the uh, town superintendent last at the last meeting talking and uh, all the different expenses that he has and uh, the revenues that he's looking for, uh, especially this uh, Esther, whatever the heck that is, and the American Rescue Plan money. And uh, I know in reading some of some of the background or the minutes from that meeting, you know, he doesn't intend to turn the, any of this money over to the town. He intends to hang on to it. So I think you need to do an offset on him for what money he's going to get and offset it and, and bring the entire school's popular, uh, the entire board of education budget down. Um, getting back to the one little piece that he had mentioned, he says that Highcrest was going to be, he talked about 
building two new schools, talked about two, two schools being renovated and one school going offline. I believe that was Charles Wright was subject to going offline. But, and we, you can think all you want, oh, there's some cost savings. But then as you read in his, into his, if you listen and read into his minutes where he says, Highcrest will be built new nearer that current site. They would, they would be utilizing that building for many, and, and, and that they would be utilizing that building, that's Highcrest, for many years beyond its, its feasible use. And what he's really saying is that he's going to still have five schools, buildings. He's not going to, re- he's not going to tear down Highcrest, not from the way he was talking. He's still going to, he's going to build new two of them, renovate two, renovate two, and then he's going to also, he's going to tear down the uh, Charles Wright and keep the high crest, which incurs all the costs, all the costs that, that we've been hearing about all along. So where are the savings? I don't, I think his plan has a huge hole in it. And I think, uh, I think somebody needs to step up. And, uh, and and cut that budget budget down. Um, tonight we're hearing about greenways, more spending. You know, where does all of this end, or doesn't it? And and you know we're hearing from Washington now that they're talking about increasing taxes on all of us because 2.3 billion dollars went out the door. And, and a little piece is going to come here to Weathersfield, and it's going to help the school system. Well, I think if it helps the school system, we in turn should get some benefit, and that is to spread that money around by reducing what you're going to give to the school system and give the taxpayers a reduction in their taxes. Thank you very much. I, I heard a noise. That, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Young. We definitely take a lot of things into consideration. And um, I know the Keisha property folks are meeting before this meeting, uh, Monday nights, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Evans. Yep, first uh, Monday of every night. And uh, according to my computer, they're still going. I had to jump off to come here, but and they're, uh, they're still going. Okay, and I apologize if I call a phone number that I've already seen. It looks like um, I see Robert O'Connor um, is on. No phone number, but just a name. Oh uh, yeah, I'm, I'm using my computer, but uh, Rob O'Connor, I'm 180 Main Street. <clears throat> I'm also on Bike Walk Weathersfield with Kevin Sullivan. Um, and just want to second the uh, most of the comments that Kevin made and um, support the council to, to pass this nomination for the Greenway. And um, I was stuck on the call if anybody has any questions, but one of the things, uh, just to throw some information back at the misinformation that the Greenway application and to be designated Greenway is a zero cost to the town. And it most likely for many of the towns that have, have had it actually has economic benefit, both in offsetting the lower tax revenue that you get from having open space, but it also enhances the tax base by enhancing property values along the Greenway in the town that the Greenway is. Um, it opens up uh, another channel to attract uh, tourism based businesses, bicycle tours, people coming in to see um, the Greenway. And <clears throat> we mentioned for, you know, for our citizens, it, it shows people that live in town, the connection between the areas that they're familiar with, but kind of, gives it a, a, a branding or a packaging. So the people, and I'm, I'm here just about five years, but it's one of the things like when you go down to the meadows to understand that there's actually a, a pathway that, you know, that can teach the history of the Connecticut River, what the cove is, where the cove goes, um, and into the other open space properties in the town, including the parks and the schools. And so the Greenway is a great way to, to, for branding, but it also opens the door and gives us a ticket to, um, to the grant process, Connecticut Deep has the, uh, their 
uh, Connecticut Recreational Trails grants. So as opposed to it being a tax drain, it actually can be an attraction for, for other funding to, to enhance these, these uh, properties. And I think anybody who's taken some of the trails and sees people out on their bikes and out on their feet, um, it also has health impacts and it has other benefits too. So, um, but there are, there are a bunch of other sources of funding that, that, are, that are available once the designation occurs. And I just mentioned that Kevin mentioned connectivity and the Putnam Bridge is another um, greenway opportunity to connect to, which will eventually bring people able to come out of Wethersfield, bike or walk over to Putnam Bridge, connect into East Hartford into the Goodwin Park Trail system, go into Glastonbury to their boathouse. It's kind of a, um, it really is a, a, an opening the door of a, lot, of a lot of things. And basically it's just, um, you know, letting people know that this, this, this property and this greenway exists here. So hope everybody will support that. And um, I think Kevin and I both are gonna be on if there's any questions later on when it comes up. Thank you guys. Great, thank you, Mr. O'Connor. And I think, I believe I got 8834824 already. And 690, so we are, oh, 860 Nope, looks like you had unmuted yourself, so. And that is it at this time, Mayor. Okay. Thank you. And um, Sue, I think we'll go. Um, had you only received one communication for an email? Yes. Did you want to read that into the record now? Um, and if there's any more that come in, we can do that at this, the second half. Um, or if you want to do it in the second half, that's fine. Whatever, whatever you want. Did you want me to? <clears throat> excuse me, to read the whole thing or just do a brief? If you um, want to abbreviate it, please, please do. Uh, it is uh, actually on the record. It will be included in the minutes of tonight's meeting and, um, you know, available to the public. Okay, I can do it quickly now. Um, this, we <clears throat> had um, a letter to the town council from Judith and Charles Melkright, and they just wanted to let the town council know that they are in support um, of decommissioning the uh, of the proposed decommissioning of the Brainerd Regional Airport, and um, they were um, concerned about um, the increased plane traffic and the noise levels, and also the failure to adhere to the requested approach over the river. And those were just um, to name a few of their concerns, but. Um, that was what they wanted to let you know. Okay. Thank you. Uh, moving on into the agenda, um, there is a uh, section for discussion items. Uh, I know this is a workshop meeting and we typically do not have uh, council comments during um, the uh, workshop meetings, but uh, if you guys would allow me the liberty to just say a few things. I know we have uh, a workshop meeting today. Uh, our April 19th meeting will be a public hearing and a presentation, public hearing uh, on the town manager's budget. So before we allow too much time to get ahead of us and we don't meet for a, another opportunity to have uh, council comments <clears throat> until May 3rd, um, and, and feel free if, if folks have something to say as well, uh, sorry to put you on the spot so so quickly, but uh, I do want to say a few brief remarks. And I promise to keep them brief. Uh, unfortunately, this uh, past week we un uh, had unfortunately seen the the passing of uh, you know one of Weathersfield's uh, iconic gentlemen, uh, not only for the, the town of Weathersfield uh, and the surrounding communities that he represented represented, but the entire state of Connecticut, uh, former state senator. Uh, Billy Seattle passed away uh, just recently, and um, you know I wanted to 
uh, express our condolences to not only his family, um, but his extended uh, family and friends. Uh, I know there were a number of folks from the greater um, Weathersfield area that uh, kept uh, Senator Seattle close uh, and uh, he was always a, a fixture in, in political life here in town and um, not only during his career as a state senator, but beyond. He served 40 plus years at DMV, uh, retiring as deputy commissioner. Uh, additionally, he spent 12 years as a state senator. And then upon retirement from the state Senate, he um, worked with Congressman Larson's office for the uh, last 14 years. Um, I had the honor of going to um, his funeral and talking to some of his uh, loved ones and, and family and friends and heard from Congressman Larson, the accolades that uh, had bestowed upon Senator Seattle, um, not only from um, our own delegation, but um, you know, for, uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, as well as President Biden had uh, um, written their letters of condolences to um, his family, as well as to um, you know, the extended family of Weathersfield and beyond uh, expressing their, their sorrow. So if you would just um, you know, take a moment of silence on behalf of Senator Seattle, uh, he did represent the fine town of Weathersfield for uh, 12 years in the state Senate. Thank you. Um, and then um, I just wanted to touch on what uh, both Mr. O'Connor and Mr. Sullivan uh, had been talking about. Uh, beyond the Greenway, there is a planned um, uh, bicycles on main event sponsored by the Old Weathersfield Shopkeepers Ex Association and Explore uh, Old Weathersfield. It is for the month of May. They will be on display much like the Scarecrows on Main Street during the fall. This will be a bike decorating contest. Um, there are entry forms that are available through various shops uh, along Main Street as well as on the town's website and on, I believe, the Great Elm um, social media page. And they can be dropped off. If folks want to enter into it. They can be dropped off at Larissa Lake uh, Salon on Main Street. Um, this goes in conjunction with the National Bike Month of May as well. Um, recently, just uh, last week, I testified uh, in written testimony to the Judiciary Committee on a proposed bill strengthening some of the state laws uh, targeting uh, not only youth offenders, but um, juveniles, uh, teens, and adult offenders uh, taking part in car break-ins and car thefts. Uh, keeping an eye on that, I'm working with our delegation on that proposal and some others. Uh, hopefully the legislature will tackle something like that, but just wanted to give you an update on that. Um, Gary, uh, we wanted to touch base with you a little bit and this is in advance of the meeting or the hearing on the uh, 19th. Um, if you could work with us on getting some financials uh, together on behalf of uh, the council, uh, we're looking at uh, you know where we are financially, what the outlook for the, the next couple months until the end of the fiscal year would look like, <clears throat> possible status of a deficit or a surplus um, where we are with that and uh, any kind of, um, you know, preparation that you may be able to give to the council prior to the public hearing on the 19th uh, would be appreciated. Um, it, there are um, some other, you know, work that's going on in town. I know you talked about an HR position a while back and uh, I think you'd mentioned mid-April, if you could give a, an update on that uh, as well before the um, council meets for the public hearing, just to get an update on that position. I know HR has a vital role in contract setting as well as, you know, obviously all human relations that goes on between departments. That would be good to know prior to uh, next meeting. And then um, finally, you know, something to discuss as well. Uh, I think Mr. Young had mentioned it or touched on it just briefly, the um, ARP funds that are coming in from the federal government. 
uh, Congressman Larson's office had reached out to me to see if we were interested in having a congressman or somebody from his staff come in and speak about the federal fund. Uh, obviously, that will have an impact on our budget, not only our budget, but possibly onto the uh, Board of Ed budget. So uh, I think uh, we're going to be taking the congressman up on his offer to come in and uh, give us a briefing on that. Gary and I will uh, be communicating with his office. Hopefully we can have him quite possibly before the public hearing on the 19th to come in and address us. That will kind of give us maybe a framework to work off of for federal funding as it affects our budget going forward. Um, and then finally, I did hear from a couple folks on State Street about the uh, new concerns regarding DMV uh, since COVID and the reopening of many of our uh, state and municipal buildings. And this one in particular, DMV is a state building. There is a concern that uh, cars are parking along State Street, dropping off, picking up people to the main entrance. Uh, because of COVID, they are using um, you know, one entry point and one exit point. This wasn't an issue before COVID because they would be parked in the parking lot and then going through the side door, the north door, closest to the parking lot. But because of um, the... Um, uh, protocols for social distancing and entry and exit points. Uh, there are people who are parking along Main Street. We're telling folks don't park along Main Street. Obviously, if you're going to be there, simply park in the parking lot. But Gary and I are having a conversation. We may have some temporary do not parking, do not or no parking or please do not park signs along State Street. And hopefully that will deter folks from um, parking there, be it temporary or for a longer duration of time. So Try to make it as quick as possible for you guys. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has anything to say. I mean, it's your liberty to, to say. I know we're not going to meet except for a public hearing in two weeks. So please. Uh, Councilman Forrest. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, pretty briefly, I just want to also share my condolences with the Seattle family. Uh, we first met. Uh, 19 years ago, I think it was this month at a diner on Franklin Ave because that's what happens and that's how it happens. Senator Seattle was my first entryway into serving this town and I continue to do so. So hopefully his guidance and his spirit and his laugh and his sense of humor uh, rubbed off on me a little bit and I carry a little bit with me. And also I found Senator Seattle to be one of those most grounded people I've ever met. And he always would tell me, and I don't think this is very private at all. He said, there's always someone to speak for the strong and the powerful and the wealthy, but there isn't always someone to speak for the common man. And I think that's really who we represented. And uh, I think that's important. So uh, to Senator Seattle in, the, in heaven. <laughs> Two is, um, I think that there was a speaker that sort of talked a little bit of falsity about the school plans. Um, it, my understanding is that there would be a rebuild of Highcrest, likely in a rebuild of Hamner, and that the old Highcrest would be taken down along with um, Charles Wright. So we'd still we would have four schools and not five. And I didn't want uh, I didn't want to start necessarily this rumor that there's going to be two Highcrest schools and the rest of it and you know, on Facebook that can run rampant. So I don't think that that was an accurate statement about what was going on and I encourage everyone to talk to the uh, Board of Education about, about their plans to get the correct data. And lastly, just a heads up as we drive around this spring, and this also goes to Gary, um, Church Street uh, is getting pretty beat up and it looks like most of it's through the MDC <laughs> because there's probably only about 40% of the road left from Weathersfield and the rest is uh, repatches, patches and repatches from the MDC. So maybe a nice phone call if it's not on their list already to help out the people on Church Street. But a road that I think is ours is Marsh Street and that's uh, getting pretty beat up as it's starting to separate pretty badly. And uh, just a heads up on that for those two particular roads which are high, highly and widely traveled. Thanks guys. Thank you, Councilman. And uh, I do see Derek on and I know Gary and Derek will probably be having a conversation on Church Street. There has been uh, Many complaints about that. So thank you. Uh, anybody else have any comments they want to bring up? Okay. If not, we'll move on to council action. 
Uh, we do not have any workshop items for referral tonight. Uh, we do have some uh, one resignation and one appointment. Well, I think it's both of one's a resignation and an appointment, and the other one is an appointment. Um, Councilman Forrest, do you do the liberty? Sure. Uh, move the appointment of Jessica Martin from 431 Church Street to uh, from alternate to member to fill a vacancy on the Human Rights and Relations Commission. <laughs> And this term is from 4 5 21 to 6 30 22. If I get a second. Second. <laughs> Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstain. Ayes have it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Alexander Kolakova of 413 Wells Road to the Human Rights and Relations Commission. Um, it's movement from alternate to fill a vacancy. The term is 4521 to 63021. Okay. Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Thing. I just have it. Motion carries. Okay. And that is it for resignations and appointments. I did see Derek on earlier. We have, um, and Derek will go in a little bit further on this, but there is a um, the reclamation pro process or program part of the um, spring paving. I know we voted on uh, some contracts last month on this. And this is a, uh, a new contract for reclamation. Uh, I will let Derek discuss it further with us. Um, I see him on. Uh, Derek, if you will. Uh, thank, you, Mr. thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council. Um, just to follow up on your earlier question regarding Church Street. Uh, yes, MDC is scheduled to come back and do some paving of Church Street, and uh, we are talking with DOT about uh, having them also be required to pave all of Knott Street. That was not the initial plan, but given how the roads are currently, um, that's what we're pushing for. So that's, I don't have a date yet, but that should be done uh, later this spring. So with regard to uh, this application, um, typically I I come in and seek approval for the reclamation work as part of the paving program in February at the same time I come in for a paving contract. However, the state was late in issuing their bid solicitation this year. Um, unfortunately, the week before it opened in early March, DOT decided to remove the reclamation work from its solicitation. Um, I spoke with them. My understanding is that uh, DOT uh, took it out because they're not planning on doing that type of work this year themselves and um, also related to some technical specification issues that they had. So like a lot of municipalities, uh, we rely on that bid for our paving program. Um, so that put us into a bit of a bind, you know, with this, with the late bid to begin with and then them taking that work out. Um, you know, at this point, prep work has already started for the spring program. We're starting to do drainage work. So, you know, we evaluate our options over the last uh, two to three weeks. Um, basically, they were to utilize, potentially utilize the last state contract that we used for our program the last two years. Um, we could utilize another municipal contract that might have this type of work. And uh, the other option would be to issue a bid ourselves and put out a local bid and solicit pricing. So, you know, we looked at, we explored all of those. Uh, Tocon did agree to hold their unit prices from the 2019-2020 state contract. Um, as you as you see in what I had submitted, um, they're looking for a 1%, 1.6% increase just to cover their increased labor costs. So instead of uh, 250 a square yard, it'd be $2.56 a square yard. Um, we did look for other municipal contracts that may have pricing. Uh, they are very hard to come by. Uh, as I stated, a lot of municipalities when they do this work will just use the state bid, which is not an option um, at this time, the current state bid. So. Uh, we did find that the town of Beacon Falls did have a contract for reclamation that is currently in place. Um, you see the bid prices for that were uh, essentially equal to what Tilcon would be charging or higher. Um, the concern with a local bid, 
was that if we put it back out because of the smaller quantities and it's not state contracts like we've discussed before, I've, I've brought to you, you know, the reason why we use them, we could be looking at higher cost uh, for administration and construction and uh, most likely we're looking at delaying our program. So with all that, um, the, my recommendation or my request to you is to uh, utilize the state contract um, from last year. We've, we've used that for the last four programs. Um, the pricing has been good. Uh, Tilkine is also, uh, as noted earlier, they were awarded the paving contract. Um, whenever possible, I do like to keep the same contractor doing that work because it is very um, interrelated and if one affects the other. Um, it just makes things go a lot smoother uh, as far as schedule and also you know, saves costs from uh, issues that arise when you're trying to grade out a road and then repave it. So um, with that, that was my request and I'm happy to, happy to answer any questions anyone might have. Thank you, Derek. Uh, are there any questions from council members for Derek on this? Councilman O'Connor. Um, Derek, I just have a quick question for you. And, and, and it just came up because you just brought up Knott Street. Um, when they were doing the work, I think it was the sewer work, the MDC was doing the work on Knott Street. There's a section of sidewalk where they literally put street tar in to replace the sidewalk. Is that going to get addressed? And I don't know, is that something that till, you know, these guys can do if they are doing the um, Knott Street? I don't know if you know the area I'm talking about, but I was a little surprised when I was walking by it that it was actually just an extension of the road. It's kind of like they ran out of cement, so they threw the tar in there. Yeah, that was a temporary measure. The work they were doing last fall was for water main uh, replacements. Yeah. They added some work to the project because of the fact they were going to be paving the roads, and they did some uh, sewer lateral repairs over the winter which is not typical for them to do work at that time, but we allowed it to keep the project on schedule. So uh, any of those si concrete sidewalks that have been impacted, um, now we're getting back to spring weather when it can be done, that, that'll be restored okay. as part of the project. It was just, yeah, I was just curious on that, but that was the only, it wasn't even relevant to this, so thank you. Um, just to piggyback off of not relevant to this uh, item as well, uh, I do walk at the intersection of Hartford Avenue, Knott Street, and State Street. Derek, there is a silk screen on one of the um, uh, man, not manholes, but uh, sewer grates right there. If you're heading north, right at that stop sign on the right hand side. I don't know if it's left over from that MDC project, if they've kept it there because they continue to do work. But I do notice that uh, the morning after, a heavy rainstorm there are you know sticks leaves and debris that are piled up on that silk screen i don't know if it's been left there by mistake or if it's um, serving a purpose yeah, we could check with mdc that. on that because i know they've been doing a lot of work on it yeah, that's it i know they were out there recently um, doing any, some work as well so that might be related to it but we'll, we'll follow up Okay. Thank you. Any seventy Councilman Forrest. Councilman Forrest. Looks like we're pretty wrapped up here. So I'm going to move to authorize the town manager to issue a purchase order in the amount of one hundred sixty thousand dollars to Tilcon Connecticut Inc. and execute all documents necessary to reclaim roads during the next paving program. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstain. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Um, and then moving right along, we have the Heritage Way Greenways nomination. Uh, I believe we've heard from uh, some folks about this uh, program already. And I don't, um, Peter's not here tonight, correct, Gary? Peter is unfortunately unable to attend tonight. I'm going to, uh, there's not a ton to add, but I'll do my best. I hope I won't do it as much justice as Peter. And obviously the, the speakers that came on did a great job. Um, and of course I get to cross out all the things they said, so I can't repeat it. But essentially what we're doing here is um, we're looking to get ourselves 
um, in a position to be nominated and on um, accepted as being designated as a greenway, this would make uh, us uh, eligible and a, a funding available to the town. Um, part of good economic development in general is to provide something for everyone. Um, when you look at how we're situated here uh, in the town of Wethersfield, we have a number of assets. This looks to leverage our assets in different ways. Uh, it, access to this funding provides some, in some cases, no cost, in other cases, low cost, if that's a matching grant, to expand or capitalize on the natural assets are, that are within the town. Uh, frankly, Connecticut has been moving into this concept of intermodal transportation uh, for a long time now. This is just a unique way for Weathersfield to really um, bridge that gap, bring it together. The Heritage Way, as one of the speakers mentioned, really covers uh, an enormous amount of our town. Every probably corner, one way or another, has something connected to the Heritage Way. Um, it connects open space with access to trails. It provides opportunities uh, for those individuals who are on those trails to stop at restaurants and enjoy other amenities that are there. Um, so the reality is this is an opportunity for us to um, be more competitive against some of our neighbors um, and also expand uh, the connectivity within the neighborhoods and uh, surrounding communities. Thank you, Gary. Any questions for Gary on the Greenway designation? Or the Heritage Way, excuse me, Heritage Way of the Heritage Connecticut Way. Way Council designation. Uh, Councilman Forrest. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, it only seems like a positive way to not only promote the town, but to set us up for any type of grants to improve our town. I mean, green spaces in our, in our um, commercial and residential areas only seems to increase the value of our properties along with our way of life. So with that, I'm going to move to authorize the town manager to execute all related documents for the nomination of the Heritage Way to become an official state greenway. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor, I'm signify. Sorry, we, oh, I'm sorry, I had a question before oh. we vote. I, I'm sorry, you didn't notice my hand, I guess. But oh, um, sorry. no, that's okay. I, um, I just wanted to know if there was any like restrictions or stipulations or strings attached to getting the designation. I was trying to think of a fun fun way to answer that by saying there's no strings attached. Uh, but my concern is there's there might always be a string attached. But at this point, uh, no, this is um, this doesn't lock us into anything. Um, it um, it just it provides us an opportunity to say this. Uh, there's some resource protection that we want to provide, um, but it doesn't necessarily say you know you can't adjust it. It's a greenway. You're not allowed to touch it. You can never build over it. You can never um, you can never tear it down. Um, but it does make us eligible for funding. Could the funding at that time have restrictions associated with it? Maybe, um, but for the most part, it's just trying to connect. Uh, it's about connectivity and, and um, kind of using our resources in a different way. Okay, thanks. Yep. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the item already. Uh, actually, before that, any other discussion on it. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Abstain. Ayes have it. Thank you. And then moving right along, we've got item, I believe, 5A. This is the property that uh, we had earlier discussed. Uh, Town-owned property on Middletown Avenue that um, we are looking to dispose of. And if I could, uh, Mr. Town Manager, do you have? Uh, I think we've gotten some referrals from both P and Z, uh, positive referrals from P and Z and Inland Wetlands Conservation Commission on these uh, for uh, a sale of the property and to authorize you to um, negotiate and execute any purchases of said property. 
So I'll, I'll turn it over to you if you have any other further comments. But uh, if I remember correctly, this is a town owned piece of property. I think the town purchased from the state of Connecticut in the 1970s uh, when I-91 had been built and um, is deed restricted property and uh, the town purchased it at that time. It is, um, like I said, deed restricted, cannot be used for certain uh, things that are outside of the deed. And um, we are looking to dispose of the property and had it heard by both P&Z and uh, Inland Wetlands Conservation Commission. Uh, I don't know if you have anything further to add, Mr. Evans. It, uh, it did go through a process at the council level um, for those referrals. Um, and uh, I think they were discussed um, in, in detail um, at both levels. And, um, and the referrals are back in front of you for, uh, for a decision. And then based off of that decision, I'll move forward with negotiating with the selected party um, to meet the requirements related to uh, completing the transaction. Any questions from councilman or council? Councilman Forrest. Thanks, Mayor. Um, question number one, as I look at the Conservation Commission's recommendations is, will the deed restriction remain with the property on transfer? I know we sort of talked about that, but legally, when it comes to the actual motion, does that need to be in the motion in order to ensure it? Or how is that ensured? don't believe it needs to be in the motion. I think as it is deed restricted and we are, the motion is to, uh, dis or, uh, let's see. Does it? Yeah, the restriction follows with the land. Correct. The deed, re the restriction yeah. will remain as, as the state required. Um, I think the Conservation Commission, as part of discussion, put it in there because they just they wanted to emphasize that it remained open. But I'll it, it run. Uh, um, Deputy Mayor Mazzarella is correct. It runs with the land, but I will add it into the. Um, I was going to add it into the uh, purchase and sales agreement anyway. That it has to follow the requirements set forth by the 1973 purchase agreement. Okay. I mean, I didn't know if there was any reverting. In the deed, I didn't read the entire deed. That's why I'm sort of asking the question for clarification. Yeah, it would revert back technically to the state. Um, right. If, if it, it made, violates it, so. out, something like that. So I'm asking you, town manager, and and it sounds like it's true, like that any transfer is going to follow with the deed restrictions. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to me, upon review of this, that that the appropriate person is going to be the, the gun club. Um, or the game, gun, the game club. And that seems pretty appropriate. I know that they've done a nice job down there maintaining their properties um, along with, I remember maybe 12 or 14 years ago when it was then Chief Knapp, they, we made a land swap with them um, for the dreadful swamp piece of land, I think it was called, fantastic name. Uh, so that seems to be in the best interest of the town. I only speak for myself. That seems to be the appropriate person. I see that we have a blank here. Um, but it seems, and I, I wanna thank the mayor and council for also sort of working through the process, engaging the, um, I meant the Weathershield Game Club when I said gun club, by the way, game club, um, engaging the Conservation Commission and the other uh, commissions for their insight. I think it was actually helpful in understanding the process and I think it worked. And let me just follow on that. There is also a requirement um, from Inland Wetlands and Conservation Commission for the uh, new uh, prospective owners to manage any invasive species and to provide native plantings uh, on this parcel. And I believe in one of the communications we had received earlier that uh, one of the groups, uh, I believe the game club had said that they would be providing uh, or planting non-invasive uh, species on the property. So um, I think uh, uh, for something like this, uh, you know, as you said, uh, you know, whoever the next owner would be would be uh, taking as much care of the property as uh, as the town has been over the years, if not better. So, 
Mr. Maz uh, Deputy Mayor Mazzarella. Yeah, I just want to comment. I, I did uh, listen in on the Wetlands Commission uh, meeting and uh, you know, this parcel is landlocked. Uh, the town of Wethersfield itself did not have access to the property. So one of their comments was uh, basically that, you know, any of the uh, butters would have a much better chance at managing the property better than the town of Wethersfield, being that we did not have any access to the land. So with that said, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the town manager to negotiate and execute a purchase and sales agreement with the Wethersfield Game Club, Inc. for the disposition of town property parcel ID 272007 and complete a sales transaction for the same. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstention? Abstain. Abstain as well. Thank you. And moving right along with the agenda, we have no more actionable items uh, except for we have to vote on the minutes. So please take a moment to take a look at March 15th's minutes. Uh, Gary had included them in our uh, packet. Anybody had any questions on those minutes at all? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the minutes of March 15th? So moved. Second. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Minutes are adopted. And if we will go into the second um, round, uh, actually before we do that, uh, I would like to mention, I believe everybody on the council had received a copy of the town manager's uh, budget uh, delivered by town manager himself this morning. Uh, it is online as well, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Evans, uh, on our town website so the public can view the proposed 2020, 2021, or 2021-2022 uh, Weathersfield budget, proposed budget, and um, the hearing on that will be, as I've mentioned, April 19th at 7 o'clock, and that will also be Virtual, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if we have any uh, guidance from the governor's office that's still before any possible executive order um, cutoff for, for the governor's executive orders. Uh, that will be a virtual public hearing uh, on the 19th as well. So with that, if we have anybody on the second half of our uh, public comments. Yes, okay, so we've got, looks like Mary Ann and uh, Bill, and sorry. Mike. Yes, that's correct, okay. hi, yes. And if you could state your name and address for the record, you'll have five minutes to, um, five minutes to speak. Sure thing. So our names are Mary Ann and William Giuliano, and we live at 340 Main Street here in Wethersfield. Um, we did send you an email um, unfortunately we sent it earlier and it just, and we, we, it was the wrong address. So we just sent it back to you, um, around the Brainerd airport, um, concerns and deforestation. So we were just wondering, um, we wanted to, you know, kind of express our concerns regarding this. We live on main street. We've lived here for 27 years and, um, we love it. This quaint village of old Wethersfield, we absolutely love. And unfortunately, over the past five to eight years, it's gotten increasingly louder with all the jets and larger planes that have been coming into the, um, you know, through through our through our um, neighborhood, and it, they've gotten larger and larger as the years go on, and louder and louder. And therefore, we um, are very upset about it because we work very hard. We relax, you know, we try to relax outside. We make we build a really nice. 
um, home and everything for ourselves. My husband is a gardener and that's his way of relaxing. And when he goes outside, all he hears is planes directly overhead of our home. We have a historic home. It was built in 1750. And, um, and so we just take pride in our neighborhood. And these, these jets are literally going right over our, uh, our house. And sometimes they're so loud and so low that they actually shake our home. And it's very scary. So not only is it the noise pollution, it's the safety. So while we have not had any incidents, thank God, to, right to now, it's just about when we're going to have them. And, you know, we don't, you know, we don't know if something bad could ever happen. And we're just very, very nervous about that. Additionally, we're not happy about them taking down our trees. This is a very quaint village we live in, and it's very unique. We're not happy about that as well. So we are looking to express our concerns. We've heard and understand that there's a potential or there's, you know, there's talks about um, closing Brainerd, especially with another airport, an international airport 20, mile, 20 minutes away. We don't understand why we need to have this other one. We've talked numerous times to Brainerd. We've asked them politely if they can change their flight path. We know their flight path is over the river and they, the pilots still continue to come over our home and all they say is take pictures of the planes, but nothing has happened. Nothing has changed. It's getting worse and worse and more and more. We would love to invite anybody to come over our home during the summer, especially on a Sunday afternoon and listen to how loud and how scary it is to hear these planes overhead. I have yet to have a visitor come and hang by our pool and tell us that, wow, what is up, what is up with all these planes? This is so scary. They're, so, they're right there over our head. It's absolutely nerve wracking. And potentially if we want, to, we want to sell our home, we are definitely afraid of what we're gonna get from a, from a um, you know, resale perspective because of this. So just, we have a lot of concerns and we wanted to make sure that they were expressed here and to make sure that you're just representing us in the best way you can. Anything you want to add, Bill? No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Giuliano. Anybody else? And <clears throat> Tim Lewis, I don't know if you were just calling in to listen. I'm just watching the meeting. Okay. And Paul O'Keefe. Okay. Eric code 860-883-4824. I think they were just listening in for the first half as well. Yeah, I'm just yeah, I'll just listening in this for the for the medium. Okay. Sometimes people Proper change. County resident. Yeah, no, just trying to feel what the town's doing. So it's good things, it sounds like uh with your development and greenways there. Excellent. Uh eight six zero five six three six nine two three. Uh good evening. This is Robert Young calling. Um I'd, I'd like to, um, you know, I see you voted tonight on, on selling that 15.9 uh, acres of land for $1,886 an acre. Yet, Mayor, you and Mr. Forrest were great supporters, and, vo and you voted to spend $75,000 on similar wetlands. I don't know the difference between one kind of wetland and another, but the fact remains on the average, the town of Weathersfield paid $75,000 an acre on the, on the Keisha farm. And there was no distinction in any of the discussions about the good land is worth this many dollars per acre the, and the, the lousy land is worth so much, it's only worth $2,000 an acre. There was never anything like that said. And here tonight, the both of you voted to Sell, to to sell Weathersfield wetlands for for eighteen hundred and eighty six dollars per acre. Yet you're the same people who voted to buy similar land for seventy five thousand dollars an acre. I think you owe one tremendous explanation, Mayor, 
and Mr. Forrest on how you estimate of that, the, the variance in those values for very similar land. I think, I think this here is something that you need to explain to the public. There was over 5,000, how many was it? 55, 5,300 people that voted against purchasing the Keisha farm and 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 because it was way too much money and here you paid so much money for with your vote and with your signatures and for for Keisha farmland and then tonight you sold very similar land for so much less please you need to explain this to us it's a very difficult situation for us to understand how to, how we have been taken secondly i'd like to mention that Mr. Forrest had made a comment tonight about my analogy of the schools, as the superintendent was talking. Uh, the schools, uh, two of them were going to hit, the superintendent says two of them were going to be renovated, two of them were going to be totally redone over, total rebuilt. And he mentioned, as I said, that Hill Highcrest was going to still remain. Here's where you need to read the information. You go to the last public town council meeting, March 15th, 2021, and you look at, oh, crying out loud, I moved it. Um, you look at page five, and the first paragraph starts off with Deputy Mayor Mazzarella. You go down to four lines, five lines down, and I'm going to pick up from there, and I'm going to read it to you. The, the deputy mayor says he also wanted to know how much of the $31.7 million would they have to spend just to keep buildings operational because they may end up replacing boilers and roofs only to eventually knock those buildings down. How would that work out and when they would start the study? Next paragraph. Superintendent Emmett responded, that was a very valid point about getting to the point where our infrastructure has gone as far as it can go, and then you have to replace it. He gave an example with Highcrest and why the roof replacement makes sense. They would look at Highcrest as being the swing space for the two building to to the swing space for the two build as new. So even after Highcrest was built new, that's another new one, nearby that site, they would be utilizing that building for many years beyond so that he sees it as feasible. What he's saying, and you folks need to go back and read this because I am right, Mr. Forrest got it wrong. What he's saying is the old building is going to stay there because they're going to invest money now or at some point in a new roof. And, and it's feasible to put the new roof on because they're going to keep it. They're not going to take it down like Mr. Forrest, and the, as Mr. Forrest indicated. And by keeping it, keeping it, we still incur costs. We still now will have five buildings. We won't have four anymore. We will have five. Uh, Mr. Forrest said four. He's wrong. And I'll debate that with anybody. But there's the words, page number five of your last meeting. Um, Speaking of five, Mr. Young, you oh, have- Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't see your clock. I don't see your clock oh. up here, Mayor. But I do want to make, make it a point that under the superintendent's plan, Highcrest will be rebuilt new, and old Highcrest is going to remain, and it's going to be incurring expenses on and on and on. I think you we have plenty of down. to be discussing this with the Board of Ed, and uh, uh, these are just the early phases right now or steps in this process. So I, too, would like to get some more information before we um, put anything forward to the public. Well, it's already out to the public, Mayor. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Thank you. Uh, in my effort to be brief earlier, I forgot to mention that um, 
on April 17th, the town is offering a uh, free drop off for yard waste at the uh, transfer station. I believe 17th is a Saturday, if I'm not mistaken, uh, transfer station opens at eight o'clock and closes either 245 or 345 on Saturdays. Um, for folks that are uh, cleaning up their property with some yard debris, be it leaves, sticks, or um, mulch and, and you know grass, please take advantage of the free drop-off day at the transfer station on the 17th between the hours of 8 and 3.45. And with that, I don't believe we have anything else on the agenda. No executive order tonight. And if uh, you indulge me for one second, just to bring it back up. I think we are all set. Virtual line, no executive session. So if I can get a motion to adjourn. I'll we'll move. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. Thank you all. Thank you guys. All right. Good night. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone.